Hi, you're probably watching this video because you've been found to have an elevated PSA. So what does that mean? We probably talked about it in the office already, um, but it's a very confusing situation uh, because it involves a part of the anatomy that we don't really talk about fully, uh, you know, in general. So uh, it's the reason the PSA, um, to reiterate, is a blood test that we get to check and screen for prostate cancer. Um, it isn't a great test, but it is a test that we have um, and that we can make use of. Um, and since prostate cancer is the most common cancer among men, and one out of eight men will end up being diagnosed with prostate cancer, uh, you know, the American Urologic Association and the National Comprehensive Cancer Guidelines uh, do recommend screening with a PSA. So uh, if your primary care got this PSA, good on them. Uh, they should have done that after speaking with you, of course. Um, and if you're in the appropriate age range, which, you know, generally speaking is 50 to 75 or 55 to 70, depending on the guidelines you look at, so, but if you're in there and they got a PSA, then that's a good thing. Um, we just now have this information that we have to kind of sort out. Um, so again, it's a screening test for prostate cancer. Well, what is the prostate? Uh, I actually went through all of, and, and four years of biomedical engineering, uh, pre-med at Boston University, and I graduated. I had no idea what the prostate was. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I wasn't really interested in urology to start medical school, but um, it's just not something we really talk about, especially when we're younger. So what is a prostate? Uh, I'm going to move, I'm going to do this here. Uh, so the prostate is an organ that we really don't know exactly what it does. It contributes a fluid to the semen to allow for fertilization and stuff like that. Um, so here's a picture of it. Uh, it's on the, the left there uh, and then zoomed in in the middle. It sits right below the bladder and the urethra actually goes right through the middle of the prostate. Um, it wasn't the greatest design. Uh, there's a whole slew of problems it can cause because it goes, the urethra goes right through the prostate. Um, but generally speaking, Prostate cancer, especially when we're finding it early through a screening method, does not cause urinary symptoms. It does not cause significant enlargement. Uh, that's a whole different issue that's benign enlargement. This is this is not what we're looking for with the PSA. Um, so there's a prostate and uh, we have this blood test. It is this thing called prostate specific antigen and it is really just a chemical that the prostate secretes into the blood that we know it, prostate cancer cells secrete more of it. So if it goes higher, there's a significantly elevated chance that, you know, maybe there's a prostate cancer. There is also a whole other set of reasons that PSAs go up and down and patients ask me all the time, patients with prostate cancer, you know, their PSA is going down, down, down. And we know they have prostate cancer. We do a repeat biopsy. They still have prostate cancer. They say, why is this going down? And like, there's not a real good explanation uh, for, you know, we, I can tell you what a study says, uh, but studies really only show marginal changes in PSA. It really is an individual thing, in my opinion, when these, when these moves happen. Uh, for example, um, you may hear bike riding elevates your PSA. Well, uh, it doesn't elevate your PSA in studies by like two points or three points. Uh, it's really like 0.2 or something like that. Um, but I definitely have seen men who stopped bike, bike riding for a while and their PSA was like, you know, in the sixes and it came down to the threes. So for sure it can happen. Another thing that can elevate your PSA is if you had intercourse or ejaculation within 48 hours of having that blood test. Again, it's not supposed to be a big uh, elevation, but for sure that can happen. And even a rectal exam can cause an ele elevation in the PSA. Uh, again, the elevation is supposed to be like less than half a point, like two tenths of a point or something like that. Um, but in you know, the right scenario, if there's like a little smoldering infection or something like that, 
you can definitely get more of an elevation in your PSA. Generally, that's not a reason to delay the repeat PSA. Like, for example, if you come to me and I do, I'm going to do an exam, okay? Um, and so if I do an exam and then you, I'm saying you probably should get a repeat PSA, um, you know, you can probably get it that that day, maybe the next day, something like that. Um, it doesn't need, you don't need to wait for weeks just because I did a rectal exam. The other thing that can elevate your PSA is an infection. And so uh, that's for sure. And that can really elevate your PSA. Like you have a normal two, 2.0, you get an infection, it's like 25. Um, so never have somebody check your PSA while you have a urinary tract infection. But the other corollary to that is if you're having urinary symptoms that seem like an infection and then you got a PSA drawn, you know, it may be that you're not having any kind of cancer. It's just seven infections. So sometimes there's this entity called prostatitis that we used to talk a lot more about as urologists. We don't talk about it as much anymore um, because a lot of what we were seeing really is more pelvic floor issues than the prostate being affected chronically. But you can have that. So if you're having to get up all night, especially if this is a new thing, right? If this is kind of where you've been for years, it probably is an infection. Infections don't last for years and years and years, generally speaking. But if it's a new thing and now you're getting up three or four times a night, certainly if you have pain when you urinate, all of a sudden you're having blood in your urine, uh, you know, even if you will check a urine and see if there's an infection, but even if there isn't an infection on the urine culture, you know, you probably want to try antibiotics uh, for a couple of weeks and see if that brings your PSA down. If you don't have symptoms of an infection, though, it is not appropriate to prescribe antibiotics. And that's something that a lot of urologists were doing, just dishing out antibiotics for everybody with an elevated PSA and then repeating it to the point where the American Urologic Association actually issued the statement. And this is just available on the web. Uh, it's their Choosing Wisely campaign. They actually have 15 statements. All these statements I completely agree with. These are basic, basic things. Uh, and so number four, don't treat an elevated PSA with antibiotics for patients not experiencing other symptoms. So if you have no real symptoms and your PSA is elevated, I'm not going to be giving you antibiotics. And I would argue against anybody else giving you antibiotics. Um, so in that case, really, you know, if your PSA is elevated and that is also kind of variable. Right now, the National Comprehensive Cancer Network uses a PSA threshold of three to begin discussions. Uh, for the longest time, the threshold was really four. Um, some laboratories are now using 2.5. And again, it's relative. Um, certainly over four, most would consider as an elevated PSA. Um, but if it's elevated, you know, if, if we usually wait four to six weeks and repeat the test. Um, if it's persistently elevated, I will be ordering an MRI of your prostate um, and having a discussion with you about maybe doing a biopsy. Sorry, I got to. Um, and going from there. So what is a biopsy? Um, and this is not necessarily something we're going to be doing. I mean, honestly, a lot of times we repeat the PSA, it comes back down, that's it. We get an MRI, there's nothing on it. The PSA is, you know, not terrible and we follow it. Um, if there's something on your MRI or your PSA is persistently and significantly elevated, then yes, we'll be talking about doing a biopsy and that's uh, generally done with a transrectal ultrasound. There are transperineal biopsies available. I am not doing that as of right now. Uh, the Actually, the evidence, uh, there is evidence conflicting. Some evidence shows most evidence shows that there is a slight decreased infection with a transperineal biopsy, uh, maybe from like, you're going from like 0.8% to like 0.2%, but there are other complications with transperineal. Uh, Harvard study did show that there is significantly more complications with a transperineal biopsy overall than a transrectal. Um, and a transperineal biopsy is, is much more arduous to perform for everyone. So I have been doing transrectal. Um, but it's done with a transrectal ultrasound. Usually it takes me 10 minutes. If there is a lesion on the MRI, I do use MRI guidance. Um, and what we do is just take little needle cores of your prostate about that long, about that wide, 12 of them. 
maybe 14, uh, but it takes like 10 minutes and I do use a numbing shot. We could do uh, like a Valium if you want it, that's to fine. You would just need to ride to and from. And then I give injectable antibiotics. I get two of them. Um, and that is according to guidelines for patient, for places where there is a significant resistance to some oral medicines, which there is here. So I do that. I've had, and I'm going to knock on wood here, but I've had, I have one infection so far in four years and I've done at least 400 biopsies. So I've had one patient uh, come back to the hospital with an infection. So um, there is a, there is a risk of infection. Um, there is also a risk of bleeding, but it's really unlikely to be admitted to the hospital for bleeding. Um, but you will see probably blood in your urine and stools for up to a couple of weeks after the biopsy. Um, and then there's a risk of false negative, which means that I did the biopsy and it was negative, but turns out you still have cancer. That's really a lot lower now with the MRI. That's like a, I think it did, uh, now currently we're detecting 99% of clinically significant prostate cancer on the first time using the PSA and the uh, fusion biopsy method with the MRI, but it's still a risk, which is why even if your biopsy is negative, if your PSA is elevated, I'm going to keep following it with you for a while, at least a while. Um, so that's really the elevated PSA spiel. Um, and also uh, a little bit about the biopsy. If you have any questions, uh, please call. But otherwise, have a wonderful day.